Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here with the Hubbard's Marina live stream show. Off the hook with Captain Hubbard. We're live. It's Sunday night, 7.30 p.m., and it's your chance to win free fishing trips. That's right. We're going to tell you what's going on now, what's coming up, and we're going to give away free stuff and answer your questions live during the show every Sunday night right here on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and more. We stream live for an hour talking fishing, inshore, nearshore, offshore. We show you photos. We talk about the weather. We talk about what's going on now, what's coming up. Answer your questions live, and we give away a five-hour half day for two, a 10-hour all day for two, a Hubbard's Marina swag pack, and our 39-hour fishing trip for one. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show. If you want to win some free stuff, all you have to do is watch the show live and comment one time anything you want. Comment once on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. You're entered to win. All you have to do is watch live, comment once, and then if you're picked as one of those lucky winners, you got five minutes or less to text us your full home address to that phone number at the bottom of the screen. If you want a question answered live during the show, all you have to do is text in your question to that phone number at the bottom of the screen. So text in your questions, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show, and don't forget to comment. It also helps if you share the stream. That really helps us to reach more people. Also, liking the stream is always something we appreciate. And then also, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, all the different social media channels. We're really working hard to try to grow all those different pathways to find us here at Hubbard's Marina. Now, tonight we're going to talk specifically, we got some bad weather coming, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We have our Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council meeting coming up this coming week, and uh, we've got a lot of stuff on our docket to talk about tonight. So hopefully you're ready for a great show. want to make sure we give a shout out to our friends over there at Gator Gym's Tackle. This show is brought to you by our friends over at Gator Gym's Tackle. 3301 Pinellas Point Drive South in St. Pete. If you haven't stopped in to say hello to our friends at Gator Gyms, make sure you do so. And tell them Hubbard's Marina sent you. A young angler in your life will get a free gift if you have them with you. So definitely worth it. Stop in, say hello, and tell them Hubbard's Marina sent you. Also, want to make sure we give a shout out to our friends out there sending stars. The stars are a way for those on Facebook to kind of show their support. It helps fuel the show, helps make everything we do here possible, and helps keep us going. So we had Jason Irwin, Ryan Welser, Larry White with a big 500, Todd Stutzman, Estelle Wolfman, Richard Harcourt, Keith White, Don Schuett with the big 400. Uh, we had, uh, let's see here, Charles Carter with 500. Thanks, buddy. John Bull, uh, Rick Rogers, James McCullum with 500. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Brian Eakin, Scott Flynn with 500. Thank you, Scott. Tim Dykes with 600. Appreciate you, my friend. And uh, Jasmine Marie as well. Appreciate all those stars. Also want to make sure we give a shout out to our supporters group. Uh, if you want to join our supporters group, it's only $4.99 a month. You get access to our private supporters page group. And uh, you get a little bit more behind the scenes information, a little bit more connectivity, communication. And we have our supporters after show where after our main live show every Sunday night, we have a little supporters after show where we talk more about what's going on and have a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So if you want access to our private supporters group, it's only $4.99 a month. Josh will drop the link in the chat. It's also on our website. Uh, you can join from our website or at the top of our Facebook page. Uh, there's a button to become a supporter. Finally... Don't forget, the end of this month, we've got some big news coming up. April 29th, midday, big, big news coming up. We're going to need your support. So mark your calendar, April 29th, midday. You don't want to miss out on that. So we're just going to keep teasing that, and uh, you want to pay attention because we're going to need your help, April 29th. Also, want to make sure we explain how to win free trips. So we talked about it. We're going to give away a five-hour half day for two, a 10-hour all day for two, a swag pack, and that 39-hour for one. Remember, throughout the show, randomly, we're going to let you know, hey, it's time to do a giveaway. The screen will change. You'll see. 
names going by, and all of a sudden, if your name pops up, you got five minutes or less to text us your full home address. That's how you claim your free trip. You do have to text us and prove you're watching live. The idea is rewarding those who are watching live. So make sure you stay tuned and uh, be ready to text us your full home address. With that, let's go ahead and get started and show you guys the photos of what we're catching now. So let's pop on over to the inshore photos, show you what's going on inshore, then we're going to work our way near shore and offshore, and then get into the weather, announcements, and then finally your questions. All right, now, black drum we've been seeing a lot of these black drum around for sure a lot of black drum action flounder have been biting well on those edges those potholes those sandy areas occasionally you might even see some of those gag grouper jack Cravel biting well we're seeing some of the mangrove showing up already which is really really cool showing up with the sheep's head being thick right now a lot of the jack Cravel around redfish action is prolific virtually everywhere the redfish are biting well lots of schools moving around snook are fired up really pouring out of the back bay area heading out onto the beaches we're finding quite a few of them in the passes already some of the big snooks still hanging in the back bay so you can find some snook in the upper and back bays but they're definitely making their way out to the beaches and passes pretty heavily trout action still going pretty well they are definitely sliding a little deeper though uh, for sure, we're starting to see those trout getting a little bit more into that like maybe 6 to 12 foot range. So the trout are moving deeper as that water warms up. We're seeing them out on the beaches and in the passes at night. Dock lights, bridge lights working really well for us uh, for the trout action. So it is a good time to get out there and uh, do some inshore action the tarpon are back already. We're starting to see some of the triple tail matriculate back into the bay. We're seeing a lot of sharks around too. So some good action inshore. The mackerel are super, super thick. The guys out there at the Skyway, the Skyway Misfits group is slaying, slaying the big, big kingfish. So it's pretty cool to see local fishing piers catching so many mackerel. There's a lot of big bluefish mixed in. They're seeing a lot of bonita as well. And then some of the guys and gals who really know what they're doing are even catching really kind of trophy size kingfish. I've seen 32, 35, 40 pound kingfish being caught by that Skyway Misfits group, which is pretty awesome. But those, those cats, they fish hard out there at the Skyway. So it's pretty cool to see them rewarded so highly with such trophy fish from a fishing pier. So uh, pretty epic. You can catch trophy fish from a fishing pier. You just got to know what you're doing for sure. Not a, not a lot of luck involved, a lot of skill <laughs> for sure. Uh, some throwback gag grouper. Now, this is pretty cool. This is sea bass exponential. This is sea bass uh, inception, if you will. <laughs> you have Captain Sea Bass holding a sea bass. It's pretty funny. You, I mean, I, I, I think it's funny at least. <laughs> it would have been awesome if the kid's name was Sea Bass too. But uh, Captain Sea Bass holding the sea bass. When I got that photo, I laughed pretty hard. So. Hopefully, I'm not the only one laughing, but whatever. <laughs> nice red grouper lately. We're seeing a lot of the big red grouper. Uh, definitely been exciting as of late. Even near shore, seeing some big, big stud, stud red grouper. The red grouper bite has picked up significantly. We've seen a drop-off in the hogfish. The hogfish bite has slowed down as that water has warmed up. But the red grouper have been making up for it in a big way. Jack Cravel's around. Definitely a lot of these half-day stringers, more predominantly gray snapper, but you never know what else might be mixed in there. A lot of big almacos lately, some catch and release gag grouper still going on, but we're getting big mangroves, and on this, uh, not the most recent 39 hour that came in this morning, but the midweek 39 hour, they ran into a school of breeder redfish, which was pretty rare for us out there on our 39 hour adventures. Some big mangrove snapper lately for sure. The mangrove snapper bite on the midweek trip was strong. They didn't get as many heads and tails, not as many yellowtails, vermilions, porgies, almacos, but they had a strong mangrove bite. Everybody limited out on mangroves, whereas the weekend trip, Kind of the opposite was true. A little bit of a softer mangrove bite, but 
tons of yellowtail, tons of vermilions. We actually were actively avoiding the vermilions. There were so many being caught. Big porgies, almacos, and more red grouper on the weekend trip, which was a welcome sight as well. Nice, big, big wahoo. Our buddy Ryan sent us this photo. This was a little bit south of us, not on one of our boats, but still a beautiful fish that we wanted to share. Nice, big wahoo. Oh, speaking of wahoo, uh, if you caught... I think we talked about it on the live video this morning. Um, if you caught it, you already heard about it. But if you missed it this morning, Will said they saw one of the biggest Wahoo he's ever seen. And Will has been doing that 39-hour trip for like close to 20 years, like two decades. So for him to say it was the biggest Wahoo he's ever seen, he said it looked like a small uh, dolphin, like porpoise. It was so fat and so long. So uh, it's impressive. Too bad they weren't able to hook it and catch it. It would have been an epic, probably close to 100-pound, if not 100-pound plus Wahoo that swam up to the Florida fishermen on this weekend 39-hour trip. So pelagics are out there. We're seeing the Wahoo. Good numbers. A buddy of mine caught four Wahoo in three hours just recently. So the Wahoo are out there. This is the time of year where the blackfin tuna start to show up heavy. There's a lot of big smoker kingfish around too. So pelagic action is ripe right now. So someone's going to get the big Wahoo. Will it be you? Time to find out. Time to get out there and find out for sure. A lot of these big redfish were caught and released on the midweek trip. Uh, you can't keep these things. So they were just quick pictures and releases, but pretty cool to see them out on a 39-hour trip. They're out there doing their thing, breeding. And uh, I, was, I was thinking uh, those big redfish that we ran into are a breeding school, but Captain Mike Anderson on the radio show Saturday, we were talking about it. He was like, no, man. It's too early. They're not out there breeding. Those fish actually live in the Gulf, which is pretty crazy to think about. These big bull redfish living in the area we caught them. It's pretty, pretty nuts. But it does make sense, and it does kind of lend itself to uh, almost be true in the sense uh, of the fact, or believable in the sense that we caught them on the bottom. A lot of times when we encounter those big schools of redfish during that more redfish breeding time closer to the fall, a lot of times those redfish that we encounter are up on the surface. We see them in the spring too. Uh, they're up on the surface. They're moving together in a big school. They're really aggressive uh, and they're kind of focused on moving, right? Uh, this case, they were actually on the bottom kind of chilling. We didn't really see them on the bottom machine. We, we anchored up and dropped down, and all of a sudden, everybody's rods start bending over, and uh, it was just redfish mayhem. So pretty interesting. So who knows? They, they could be living out there. They could be out there breeding early. Who knows? So interesting dynamic for sure. So there's been some conversations around what those redfish were doing when we encountered them. But... All right, we talked about the photos. Now it's time to talk a little bit about the weather. Weather. Weather is weathering again. Is spring is in the air. Spring is in the water. Spring has settled in, and spring weather is also here. Today was absolutely perfect, beautiful. Yesterday was really nice, too. A little breezy yesterday. Um, but it is, I mean, 65 in the morning, 78 in the afternoon. A little bit of a chill in the air. You need a light jacket in the morning. By the afternoon, it's warm in the sun, but not hot. It is just beautiful. But it is breezy. And with that comes a little bit of a rougher condition, unfortunately. So moving over to the Hubbard's Marina website, we're going to click Fishing Trips, scroll down, and click Weather Links. We're going to take a peek at these weather links right there on the Wind Finder forecast. We're going to start in the 5 and 10 hour forecast area and click on that Egmont Key Channel entrance buoy. Oh, finally, some dark blue in the forecast. That's nice. I haven't seen that in a minute. Uh, it's been pretty bleak weather forecast-wise. Uh, it's supposed to pick up tomorrow out of the east, blowing uh, basically 20, not, 20 miles an hour, which is uh, not great. So tomorrow's going to be a little bumpy and then overcast in the afternoon. So not perfect, but not terrible tomorrow. Then Tuesday, it gets a little terrible, <laughs> blowing 25 to 30 not or 25 to 30 mile an hour. Uh, and really starts to pick up three and a half, almost four foot. Then Wednesday is even worse, gust into a solid 30 miles an hour, four foot and change. Thursday, 45 miles an hour it gusts, so that wind just continues to pick up. 
uh, before a forecasted little storm uh, Thursday, midday to mid-afternoon. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, not great. Monday's okay. Monday's okay. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, not great. And then Friday, we finally get the front. So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is all prefrontal activity. That south wind, as that front moves down, that frontal boundary moves down into our area, it's sucking wind towards it, sucking energy towards it, and that's what creates that south wind. And then you get the big storm, that prefrontal activity, and uh, then Friday, the wind shifts out of the north, and the front actually passes us. So then, once the front passes, it should calm down a little bit and should be a little bit more moderate there at the end of the weekend and start of next week. Finally, looking real nice, real, real nice. So some dark blues, April 18th, 15th. So we had to make it all the way to the 15th of April for it to calm down a little bit. So hopefully this will change again. This time of year can be very turbulent and very difficult to forecast. So I wouldn't put a lot of weight in all this. Uh, this prefrontal activity, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, could soften up. Uh, very unexpectedly. So this could totally change uh, drastically. So right now, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, not looking great. But like I said, those forecasts can really change quickly. So if that front isn't as strong, if it's not going to push down as much, that prefrontal activity isn't going to affect us as much or could not affect us at all. So I wouldn't get too worried about this week's weather as it can severely shift or totally dissipate. So there's hope, there's hope, but right now not looking too good through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It starts to calm down a little bit this weekend and then looks really good at the start of next work week, at least right now. But again, you got to keep checking back because that weather can shift absolutely drastically. So with that, we want to make sure we do some announcements, the right to hunt and fish page. Josh, I'm going to let you actually take us away to uh, show the folks how we navigate here. So the right to hunt and fish page is on our website. So we added it to the hubbardsmarina.com website, go to info and right under the info tab, the very first one is the right to hunt and fish. Make sure you check out this page after the show. Josh is going to drop the link in the chat. But real uh, all Florida and the Florida Guides Association is working really, really hard on this right to hunt and fish. And we would love for you to get that information out there and uh, get the information yourself. So check out the right to hunt and fish page on our website. Again, it's under info right to hunt and fish all the information is here <clears throat> definitely some good info and uh with that we've got captain mike anderson on the line what's up buddy how are you pal how was your weekend oh it was good especially saturday morning i had a lot of fun saturday morning there's this cool <laughs> radio show that we do i don't know if you've heard of it it was fun always is <laughs> yeah always fun to hang out man and catch up and uh poke fun poke the bear a little bit yeah. it's, it sounded like the phones were working again this morning i caught the tail end there the last hour of the show and heard the safe uh boating tip but uh, i didn't want to interrupt the conversation it was a good one this morning if you guys missed out you you really missed out uh they had uh john oliverio from power po pole uh join uh mike mahoney and uh it was a good conversation man it was really good yeah i'm sure i'm sure it was i I, uh, I did not get to enjoy that one myself. I, I had some phone calls from some regular callers on my cell phone, so I assumed the phone lines weren't working, but maybe they came on late. So I don't know. Uh, hopefully they got all that Who figured knows? out. So that, yeah. I know I heard uh, Fogel do his uh, safe boating tip. I tried. I couldn't get through. So I don't know. Maybe it was kind of hit and miss. Strange. Yeah, either that or the lines were lit up because it was John Oliverio. Who knows? Yeah. Or maybe Mahoney yeah, yeah. didn't pay attention to the phone log. There's that. It's very possible <laughs> that could as well. Be true. <laughs> yeah, it could be true too. Uh, yeah. So uh, fishing, Bert. how's the inshore bite going? Well, I talked to some of my guys that fished uh, yesterday and today, and they said the amount of mackerel they're seeing is unbelievable. It's crazy, dude. <laughs> dude, the I was looking at the Skyway Misfits Facebook page today. I mentioned it earlier. They had a 32, a 35, and a 40-pound kingfish off the Skyway Fishing Pier this week. That's crazy. Nuts, man. Nuts. But that's good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's that's uh, that's really good. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the new moon's got the bait moving around. The mackerel's yeah. got the bait moving around. So, uh, 
you know, things are happening. It's, uh, there's a few tarpon starting to show up already. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty doggone sexy. It looks again, like <laughs> our weather's I weather's going to be jacked. <laughs> what? I was, I was going to say it's looking sexy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is looking sexy. Uh, and then it looks like Mother Nature is going to slow us down a little bit again. So, you oh, know, yeah. fun, fun, never ends. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Mother Nature is definitely throwing a wrench into things, but that's what gets things moving. That's what gets the bait moving. That's what gets the fish moving. So I'm trying to stay positive here and look at the silver lining. It was gorgeous today. It was uh, it was yeah, nice on was on, nice on, uh, on on the water, offshore, near shore, and even on land. So, that is the the spring is in the air, right? So yeah, we we kind of figured today was going to be the day, uh, and then it's just uh, a little bit troublesome from here. But you yeah, know, it is what it is. You got to fish around it, and you know, be careful what you wish for, because come August and September, we'll be begging for a breeze. Yeah, it was uh, this so. morning. It was kind of chilly. I kind of regretted not having a jacket with me. So it's it's <laughs> nice. Yeah, I get it. Try nice to soak it up. Everybody's like, you don't have a jacket. I'm like, hey man couple weeks we're gonna be wishing it was cooler again so yes, let sir. your bones absorb what you can <laughs> <laughs> right that's a good idea i can tell you that i uh i'm excited to get out there this week and go to work so yeah. uh yeah i'm gonna uh, spend some time in the skiff tomorrow here locally and then oh, headed for how did your first skiff River. trip go today did it did it, was did it float <laughs> it floated just fine beth and i were beth and i were good we uh yeah Rolled up to a, a little place on the Alpi River, had some grouper nuggets, and uh, it was all good. Nice. So, dude, yeah, I bet really, that really power like pole, uh, power pole move uh, trolling motor. I bet that thing could plane that small boat off with all that thrust. <laughs> right. nice. Yeah, it's got plenty of power. Plenty of power for that thing. So, I got the Great. push pole on it, and we're ready to uh, take it to the plantation on Crystal River this week, and hopefully uh, catch some fish on Tuesday out of her. So uh, super proud and excited to be part of the what's, KO Boatworks family. What's it feel like to tow an 18-foot KO skiff, the KO Boatworks skiff, compared to your 26-bay contender? Like, is it well, night and day difference? Do you forget you have a trailer? The beautiful thing is with the uh, shameless plug for Bartow Ford, the Bartow Ford uh, F-250 diesel, yeah. it doesn't normally feel like my 26 contender bay is behind me. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got you. <laughs> so it really, really doesn't seem like there's anything behind what, you when you're pulling that skip. What's the curb weight of that 26 bay? It's, uh, it's kind of light. Uh, the 26 bay? Yeah. No, it's like 4,500 pound boat. Oh, that's that's pretty heavy. It's a really, it's a pretty heavy uh, bay boat. Yeah. That's yeah. why I ride so nice, though. Yeah, the flying you know hook, I mean? too, is 27,000 pounds. So. Yeah, that's a little heavy. <laughs> a little heavy. When yeah, I towed it, heavy. I felt it. I felt it. <laughs> it, was, it was back there. <laughs> yeah. I'll bet. Yeah, that's this, impressive. Yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting towing that down the street. But uh, we've towed <laughs> uh, the 40, what was it, the 75-foot uh the dolphin boat, we towed that from uh, our shop over there in Gulfport to Maximo Marina. It was pretty fun. Really? Pretty fun getting that down there. That was a truck, though, and uh, the trucker had to do, t- do that one. I did the 49 passenger, the hubcat. Well, I've towed two of those down there, and uh, they, are, they are interesting navigating those neighborhoods. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I, I, it's out of my league. I have to call you if I ever have to tow a big boat. Well, it's just a, it's a group <laughs> effort. That's all it is. We have one truck blocking traffic, and everybody's out, and yeah, everybody hates us. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always fun. So uh, yeah, tarpon, well, tarpon are on the beach already. I've seen a lot at the bridge. Are they getting out there on the beach? Are you hearing reports of that already? So I have heard some reports of some beach, uh, some beach tarpon to the south. Nice. Um, oh. And not just south south, but fairly close, like Anna Maria. Wow. So um, I haven't heard that those numbers are silly thick, but a couple yeah. of guys that were out there farting around ran across some fish. So um, I think it's a little early for that, but, you know, we have so much bait. Uh, I'm sure the bait has something to do with it as well. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's really good stuff. I did hear that the bite at the bridge has been good. One of my buddies was going out. He called and asked me about another bridge. So I don't know. I never got to talk to him. So I don't know if that means the bite at the Skyway Bridge wasn't good 
or if he had just caught a couple of Skyway Bridge and was wondering if it was good at the other bridge as well. So, yeah, um, I don't know, um, hmm. but I'm I'm excited to to get rocking and rolling here. I was looking forward to have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday trips this week after my trip to uh, Crystal River, and uh, it doesn't look like a lot of that's going to be positive. But we're uh, you know we're we're hopeful. Wow! Oh, someone just said on the on the stream here. Someone jumped a tarpon at the Scout South Skyway Pier uh, Friday night. So, oh yeah, for sure. There's 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 been some fish at the bridge. I talked to a couple guys that have jumped six, seven, eight fish already wow. in the city. So they're starting to stack up at the bridge, which isn't I know they've jumped totally few, abnormal. They've jumped a few from the jetty of Johns Pass uh, snook fishing. Well, so uh, okay, yeah, they're, perfect. They're definitely around, man. It's yeah, cool. this whole thing's starting to fire off. It's a, uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's, uh, it's spring. It's magical. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, brother. Well, we'll let you go. That was a, that was a good game. I thought Iowa would have had it uh, the way it started. They were on a roll, but then uh, I was at the gym and then I went and did something, came back, and uh, Carolina was running away with it. I was like, ah. yeah, I didn't, I didn't like the. Uh, I, I thought that Iowa burnt a ton of energy. At the start. They came out really fired up, really playing well early. Yeah. And and I, I told I told Beth, I said if I said South Carolina's gonna win because if Iowa played that well and was that hot and could only be up a few, that's gonna be a problem because South Carolina wasn't gonna stay that cold and of course they didn't come out in the second half playing much better. So um when when you when you're when you're led in scoring by a freshman, um, you know, South Carolina is just a really, really, really good basketball team. It's a yeah. really great program right now. Uh, Don Staley's doing a great job there. So it's, uh, I, I was hoping, I was pulling for Caitlin Clark. I wanted to see her get one just because she's been such a great player and such a great influence for the game. But, yeah. um, you know, it is what it is. I mean, the team that was supposed to win it, won it. this year won it. Yeah. So, and the team that probably should have finished second, finished second. So, yeah. You know, it was all good. Good games, though. Good games. I hate that it's over. <laughs> well, the guys' tournament's still going on, right? It is. Yeah. Championship games tomorrow night. Bad part is it's. I don't think it starts till like, 9.20 or something. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's and I'll be is. in Crystal River with an early wake-up to uh, do some filming on the skiff. So, I will not – if I do see some of that one, it'll only be a little bit of it. I won't be able to watch it all. The, uh, the final four games were great, though, on the men's side. It was – good basketball to watch so and the good news about you know college basketball season coming to a close march madness and all that good stuff it means we're all that much closer to nfl football again <laughs> so there it is thing. well we yes, appreciate sir. it mike thank you buddy oh, all good brother enjoy the show have a good right. one see you buddy see you partner bye Always good to hear from Cap Mike and get an inshore check-in. So hopefully you enjoyed that, and uh, hopefully you're excited because, as he said, NFL football is back on. The draft's coming soon. I think that draft's at the – did it just happen? I'm pretty sure it's close. So that is exciting in and of itself. And seeing how everybody shakes out in the off season. But we've talked about – what we've been catching now, we talked about the weather, and we talked a little bit about our right to hunt and fish. The other thing I want to mention, it's a new moon. You know, the, everybody's talking about the solar eclipse. You know what I'm focused on? New moon. Solar eclipse happens because of a new moon. A new moon means the moon passes between the sun and the earth. That's what creates a new moon. So we are going to see that new moon in the daytime in the form of a solar eclipse. But it's also going to mean... A lot of bait moving, a lot of water moving, and typically a good incoming tide bite if you're if it, inshore fishing. Kingfish we talked about, they are starting to get really thick. One of our charter boats came in today to Don's dock. He had 12 kingfish on his charter uh, today trolling uh, pretty close to shore. So definitely the kingfish are inundated in our area, on our beaches, in our near shore artificial reefs, wrecks and even in the bay around the shipping channel and Skyway Fishing Pier. So good time to go get your kingfish. The red grouper bites fired up. As I said, we've seen a decline in the hogfish near shore, but the red grouper are picking up. So we're fishing a little deeper, definitely trying to target those red grouper more. We're seeing a pretty good lane snapper bite.
pretty good mangrove snapper bite near shore and uh, lots of those heads and tails mixed in. Offshore, really focused on those red grouper, big mangroves, seeing a lot of the yellow tails, vermilions, porgies, almacos mixed in. You got a shot at the scamp, the trigger fish, and a lot of pelagics too right now. So pretty darn good right now off, uh, off the near shore and offshore waters. Now, uh, we do have the Gulf Council meeting coming up this coming week, and I uh, wanted to mention that to you guys and show you something real quick. If you pop on over to golfcouncil.org, so if you're interested in the Gulf Council meeting next week, uh, I wanted to show you this real quick. Go to golfcouncil.org. Right on the Golf Council's homepage is the council calendar. This is a super helpful tool. It shows you the whole month, and it has little blue dots where things are happening. So if you go to the 8th, which is tomorrow, you can see there's a council meeting coming up. And so you can just click on that council meeting, and it's going to bring you right to the council meeting website page. You want to hit the agenda if you want to see the overview of the meeting, kind of what's happening when. The agenda is a really helpful tool for that, but it's not clickable, and uh, it just kind of gives you an outline. I don't like going to the agenda. I think it's kind of useless. Uh, I like going to meeting materials because the meeting materials is the meat and potatoes. It shows you where it's going to happen. You can register uh, and join the webinar. So if you actually wanted to listen into the meeting uh, live, uh, it starts tomorrow. Uh, so you can join. The meeting starts at 8 a.m. tomorrow, Monday. But remember, it's happening in Alabama, so they always go off local time. So all the times you're going to see, uh, because it's happening in Alabama in the central time zone, all the times you're going to see are central time. So this means it is going to start at 9 a.m. tomorrow, Monday. So you can join the webinar, join the meeting live if you would like, uh, or you can just tune in. We will be updating you next week, Sunday night, on what happened. So you can tune in a week from today and uh, next week's live stream show. I'll give you an update on what's happening. Uh, Monday, it's going to start out with shrimp, not really applying to us too much. The CDAR tab, uh, which is basically where they talk about upcoming stock assessments and they argue about stuff. Uh, that will be interesting to see where we're at in the Southeast Data Assessment and Review. That is what CDAR stands for. Again, Southeast Data Assessment Review. That is the panel uh, that does uh, the stock assessments and is responsible for a lot of the science that manages our fishery. And then after that, there's lunch, and then that's when it starts to really hit home for us. This is the per first important committee uh, Monday afternoon. That is the data collection committee. That is when they're going to start talking again about our for hire data collection program. You guys might know about CFIRE. CFIRE was that thing that man was a mandatory data collection program for our charter boats. It was unfortunately set aside, and we're trying to get it set up again. So this is the first holdup is talking about uh, economic collection. The, how are they going to do economic collection? How are they going to get around it? And you can see they slated f three hours to discuss this, which is absolutely asinine in my opinion because it's an easy decision. But not everybody listens to me, but we'll see. We'll I'll be there. I'll be traveling to Alabama early to try to get people to listen to me. <laughs> So that'll be the first thing that's real important to us, at least. Then it's a closed session where they're going to appoint the ReFish AP. I am currently the chair of the ReFish advisory panel, and I hope to be reappointed to the advisory panel and uh, hope to reclaim my chair seat at that advisory panel. So that'll be interesting. That's a closed session where they kick us all out of the room and they vote. And I've been lobbying all the council members to get my position back. So we'll see how that shakes out. Then Tuesday, Tuesday morning, it starts back up. And this is where the rubber meets the road. Refish committee is going to be really interesting. Tuesday, the most interesting part, the whole reason, real big reason I'm driving to Alabama. Boom, right here. Tuesday morning, presentation, 2024 gag and red grouper recreational season projections. Finalizing our gag grouper season for 2024 and finalizing when they feel they project that red grouper is going to close due to a quota closure. So finalize projections on when red grouper is going to close this year and when gag grouper season is going to open. That will happen Tuesday morning. Now, insider note, trick to the trade. At some point, this is going to turn blue and be clickable. Notice everything else is clickable, 
So like if you wanted to see this presentation, you could click it and it would open the presentation. That's how it's supposed to work. But you'll notice that presentation that's super interesting that everybody cares about, gag grouper and red grouper season projections, it's not clickable yet. They're holding back. And that's not the council holding back. That is no fisheries uh, that is uh, supposed to be supplying that presentation. So the council's pretty upset about it, I would imagine. Uh, I'm assuming that. I'm putting words in their mouth. But they're supposed to have all this stuff up uh, in the Federal Register ahead of the meeting. It's supposed to be uh, uh, noticed to the public, and it is not in this case. So pretty interesting. But it should be up before the meeting starts. So a, I would imagine probably sometime tonight, sometime tomorrow morning, this is going to become clickable, and thus the information will be out there. So pretty interesting. But once the information's out there, is it going to be finalized? That's going to be a real big question. Is is the presentation going to say, this is going to be the gag grouper season? Or is the presentation going to be like, and Andy Strelchek will further discuss this? Or will it just have some highlights and he'll have to say it in person? So that's going to be interesting. That's the big thing that I'm waiting for Tuesday morning. Then we move into Tuesday mid-morning. Uh, this is going to get complicated where they talk about the shallow water grouper complex. Basically, they're going to break up scamp, yellow mouth, yellow, uh, yellow edge, and uh, scamp, yellow mouth, yeah, and yellow edge. And it could very well affect future management of scamp. So we're watching this one closely. Then uh, Tuesday afternoon, they got into a lot of the yellow edge stuff and a little bit more about the research track assessment on Red Snapper and some other different things there. Then it gets into the IFQ discussions Thursday, Tuesday afternoon. And then Wednesday morning is mackerel committee where they talk about kingfish, a little bit more about Spanish mackerel, and uh, basically some more coastal migratory pelagic stuff. And then we get into some of the committee reports and then public comment. So Wednesday is public comment. And then Thursday is where it all wraps up with full council. So that is how the meeting is going to break down if you're interested. If you want to stick up to it, uh, you can, uh, and I wanted to give that quick highlight so that way you kind of knew how it was going to break down and how to join the meeting if you were interested. If you're not interested, again, just tune in next week. We're going to break it down for you. We're going to give you the notes. We're going to give you the highlights, and next week we should have the folks from Old Salts here with us, uh, Tommy and Amy Verdansky, so that'll be cool. Uh, talking King of the Beach, and they're going to give away a King of the Beach entry as well. So that should be next week. A great show, so definitely tune in. With that, let's get into some questions. And uh, we're going to give a little bit of extra time because we ran a little long with all the other stuff. So let's dig into some questions here. Will Red Grouper be open the first week in May? Tomorrow. We're gonna, or Tuesday morning. We should know for sure, but... Everything I've heard says that Red Grouper will probably be very similar to next year, or excuse me, last year, in the fact that last year we, clo we had a season projection of closing July 19th. I would imagine it's going to be very, very similar, if not very almost the same. So that's my guess. Mid to late July is when Red Grouper is going to close, but we'll find out for sure tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. Uh, would like to know what to target from a small craft off the beach. Three miles is all I'm going to go. Uh, you don't. I wouldn't even go three miles. Uh, I would take my little kayak, uh, a rowboat, a John boat, a bathtub, and I would row uh, into John's Pass. Uh, maybe not an outgoing tide. Maybe not a, a an, <laughs> an east wind. Be careful because uh, you don't want to get sucked offshore. But being facetious, literally a kayak. Uh, as long as you didn't have a really strong wind blowing you offshore, a really strong current pushing you offshore, uh, you could catch a lot of fish right on the beach, right around the pass right now. The, the bait is stacked in the morning, stacked in the morning. Thread fins, big green backs, and it pushes out of the bay and then gets attacked by mackerel, uh, sharks, tarpon, and kingfish. So uh, that would be what I'd target fishing uh, around Bunces Pass, Pass a Grill, Blinds Pass, Clearwater Pass, John's Pass, any local pass. Um, you could be out there throwing a really fast-moving flashy bait like a gotcha plug, a casting spoon, a Yozuri Crystal Minnow, a Rapala Lipped Plug. Uh, cast as far as you can, retrieve it really quickly, or just, just uh, tow it, and uh, you'd have a really good shot at catching up mackerel maybe even a kingfish for sure so 
good opportunities out there for sure. Let's go ahead and do our first giveaway of the night. Let's do our five-hour half day for two guests. Five-hour half day for two guests. Lucky winner is... Dale Opie from Michigan. Congratulations, Dale, on that five-hour half day for two guests. You got five minutes or less to claim your free trip. Uh, make sure you text us your full home address, Dale. That is a five-hour half day for two guests. All right, next question. I love catching and eating amberjack. I've caught a lot of them. My friends on the East Coast never keep them. They say the meat is dark and it's wormy. What's the deal? Your friends on the East Coast fish the East Coast. That's their problem. <laughs> the East Coast Amberjack, uh, they have a different diet, and that diet makes them uh, more predisposed to getting those worms, those parasites. And it is very common when you get a Amberjack off our East Coast of Florida that traverses anywhere from North Carolina to, like, the Bahamas, they're going to see a lot more parasites. The meat is going to be a lot darker, and they're not going to be as good edible quality so a west coast amberjack a golf amberjack is markedly different looks different in meat uh the the filet looks different and it's shockingly uh, exponentially less predisposed to having parasites so i've heard it's the diet i've heard it's water temperature i've heard a lot of different things but it is definitely very different someone comes over here from the east coast and they'll they'll look at us funny for keeping an amberjack because they're so not used to it and someone on the west coast is so used to keeping amberjack they're they think it's weird that people on the east coast don't keep them so it's always one of those things that's kind of interesting uh, but definitely uh amberjack on the west coast in the gulf of mexico are edible they're great table fare and a lot of people do eat them, whereas on the East Coast, it is very common for them to either release them or use them uh, for, like, cat food or that kind of thing. They don't typically eat them on the East Coast, which is interesting, in my opinion. But one of those things, for sure, and it is true. So definitely true. Let's see. What other questions do we have? Uh... I have a question. What would happen if we ever caught an endangered species while out on one of your charters? What would happen? Uh, well, there's nothing endangered. Uh, I guess you could accidentally catch a sawfish. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you could encounter that could possibly happen uh, that are protected, like, uh, but endangered wise. The only thing that's, in I don't even know if sawfish is listed as endangered anymore. Um, so I don't know if you could catch an endangered species, but you could catch species like um, a gag grouper that's considered overfished and undergoing overfishing. A lot of people mistake that for being endangered, but being listed as critically endangered is very, very different than being overfished and undergoing overfishing. So definitely different. But uh, long story short, if you caught something like that, we'd have to let it go, not bring it on the boat. Like, Amber, like uh, Goliath grouper, for example. You're not allowed to even bring them out of the water. So there's different fish out there that are pretty heavily protected, and we just go about the same way as everything, trying to be as careful as we can and preserve and protect and conserve as much as we can. Uh, what is – wait, what? Uh, someone asked my favorite color. My favorite color is blue, uh, I would have to say. I know that off the top of my head because uh, I have kids, <laughs> so we, we have that conversation a lot. My son's favorite color is green. My daughter's is pink. Mine is blue. <laughs> uh, are you guys running extra trips during red snapper season this year? Yes, always. We, uh, we try to do our best to uh, keep our trips as affordable as possible while also trying to accommodate as many people as possible and make as many people happy and make as many memories as possible. So, yes, during red snapper season when – Demand is higher. We try to increase supply as much as we can. The idea that we try to spread out the demand so that way we try to limit the number of people out there and try to provide a better quality experience. But it is tough. It is a very busy time of year where demand is really high. Um, so generally it is a little bit more busy that time of year. Uh, this, again, can't be emphasized enough. It's so comical to me. This time of year, like I said earlier, 
It's 65 in the morning. It's 75, 78 during the day. It's absolutely beautiful. It does not get any better weather-wise than right now. My favorite time of year to fish is spring and fall. It's not too hot, not too cold. There's not many people around. Post-Easter, we slow down. We, started, we start slowing down tomorrow. We only have 40 people on the half day tomorrow. So it's starting to slow down now, and it will be a little slow until the kids get out of school. This is that magical time of year. If you're a local, if you're from out of town, this is the time of year to go because it's not hot yet. The kids aren't out of school yet. There's not huge crowds. This is the time where you can get on a 39-hour trip with 30, 35, 40 people, have plenty of elbow room, have beautiful weather, and catch tons of keeper fish. Once red snapper season rolls around, you don't get to keep more fish. All of a sudden, other species close. Triggerfish closes. Jacks and, and gags will still be closed. And a lot of times, we're going to see the red grouper probably close too. But you'll be able to keep red snapper, and it's going to be hot as hell. It's going to get summertime. People are going to be everywhere. Traffic's going to be bad. It, there's just The trips are full, but everybody waits to go fishing that time of year for those red snapper. It is just mind-numbing to me that they're so overrated because I guess the demand or the supply is really small because they're only open for a small number of weeks in a year. So people always want to go fishing for these red snapper where there's so many other better times of the year to go fishing, like right now. So I want to emphasize that to you. But, yes, we will add extra trips in red snapper season because everybody wants to fish then. In case this Wednesday 12-hour extreme is not going, do you think booking a 12-hour on Sunday has a better chance? Yes, 100%. I would, I would bet pretty confidently that Wednesday's extreme trip is going to be canceled. I almost canceled it today uh, because of my confidence that it will be canceled, unfortunately. But... Sunday is looking a little better. Uh, there is a potential that Sunday could be better, but it seems like next week, Wednesday, a week from today, has the best chance uh, to be better. Uh, can we use a small motorcycle, motorcycle type battery with an electric reel in the 39 hour? Yes, you could. Uh, preferably, the electric reel batteries have progressed exponentially since electric reels came out. And now even electric reels have progressed exponentially. Now they make a very small, compact electric reel for uh, deep water jig fishing. It is like the size of most normal uh, reels. You can't even really tell it's electric. Uh, those are bad to the bone. So if you're uh, getting up there in age and mobility and uh, you want something like that, those would be what I recommend. Some of those small, compact electric reels that aren't huge. The reels like this just you're not going to be able to catch mangrove snapper very well with them uh, because they're just too heavy, too bulky, and it makes it hard to feel the bite. Those smaller, compact, lighter ones, a lot more fun to fish with. You can feel the bite a lot better. You're a lot more mobile. And then on top of that, battery technology. Go to Abyss Batteries. Abyss Batteries is a good partner of our us at The Real Animals. And Abyss Batteries, they make a uh, – Talk to our friend Ryan Wiggins. If you call the Biss Battery, you're going to get Ryan Wiggins on the phone, and he can link you up with one of their um, their uh, their uh, electric reel batteries. And they actually have some fanny pack options, so you can wear a fanny pack. You have the battery uh, that's very light in the fanny pack with just a small cord going to your reel. Now all of a sudden you're super mobile. You don't have a battery on the deck. You don't have wires that you're going to trip over. Uh, it's way better and that battery is going to be able to last a lot longer so go that route invest a little bit of extra money you're going to be a lot more nimble a lot more mobile you're going to be able to feel the bite a lot better and have a better experience overall so if you have to invest in electric reel spend a few extra bucks and get the good stuff that is going to help you to feel like you're still fishing right uh, i have two questions when trolling on a 39 hour trip what is the recommended length and yard the braided line you don't need braided line at all, really, uh, to troll. Uh, if I was going to troll on a 39-hour, generally, uh, you might use braided line as backing in case you get a really big fish. Uh, but you really don't even need that. If, you're, if you've got a really big reel, which is what you need to troll anyway on a 39-hour trip because we're going bottom fishing, we're not trolling, so you got to really have a big reel to retrieve that fish. So most of the time you're using like an 80 wide two speed something with a lot of uh, a lot of line capacity. So like 80 pound mono works great. Uh, and uh, in the case of having to <laughs> thumb the spool or 
pawn the spool or if you get in a tangle, it's way better. So I like using mono because then you can also use that reel for big amberjack or big grouper once you stop trolling you can cut that trolling rig off put a bottom rig on it and use it for big bait for bottom fishing too so i like using a bottom fishing rod and a big reel that i can also use for big amberjack big gags and dropping big live baits once i'm not trolling um and that makes it a lot easier having mono on there too so 80 pound test is what i would recommend but uh, if you want to use braid you could use it as backing um, but i wouldn't have it on top of the mono uh, a lot of times it'll sink in and cause problems anyway. So, all right, next question. A lot of people are asking about the tattoo. You can get a Hubbard's Marina tattoo on your lower arm, your lower arms, or your lower legs, as long as it's a dominant tattoo and it's some form of our Hubbard's Marina logo. Uh, you get a free 39 hour trip times two. So, you get a 39 hour fishing trip absolutely free times two basically uh, a little more than a thousand dollars really with tax it's like twelve hundred dollars uh free for getting that hubbard's marina tattoo on your lower arm but it has to be dominant so think about it if you want to uh, take advantage of that offer just shoot us a text message to the phone number at the bottom of the screen or email me at info at hubbard's marina.com we can send you some examples of uh, tattoos that have been done and uh, you can go from there all right uh, let's see how's the weather looking for friday's 39 hour trip it's looking pretty decent not terrible but looking pretty decent what are some good brands of gps trolling motors the best brand uh power pole the power pole move is uh, really really the best in the game it has the most thrust it's really cool it was in testing for eight years it's a local company, a uh, really good guy uh, who owns the company. It's the best customer service. The PowerPole Move is the most expensive, uh, but it's definitely worth the extra money. Uh, there's also, the, everybody has one, right? Minn Kota, Rodan, uh, there's a bunch of them out there. But the PowerPole Move is the latest, greatest, newest, and is local and uh, is backed by some really great customer service. So that's what I would recommend is the PowerPole Move. Uh, how, oh, does Amberjack freeze well? Generally, yes. Amberjack, uh, is a pretty good holder, but, uh, I like eating Amberjack pretty quickly. Uh, Amberjack has a lot of, uh, uh, oil in it. So if you're not going to eat it right away, what I would do is smoke it and turn it into fish bread. And then once you've turned it into fish bread, then you could go ahead and freeze it pretty easily. So, if you're not going to eat amberjack fresh, it's great grilled or fried fresh. Uh, I would smoke it and turn it into spread and then freeze that spread. Um, next question was about gag grouper season. Uh, I'm expect or we know gag grouper season is going to open September 1st. How long is gag grouper season going to be? We'll find out Tuesday morning at the golf council meeting in Alabama. But from what I'm ex what I've heard, what I've talked, who I've talked to. I would expect around three weeks is what I'm thinking. Two to three, maybe four weeks. It'll be definitely measured in weeks, not months. Uh, but I'll be pleasantly surprised with more than four weeks. I'll be disappointed if it's less than three weeks. But I'm hoping for three weeks. Um, but we'll find out, like I said, Tuesday morning. Uh, let's see. Do you have any Vero Beach party boat recommendations? Uh, I don't think there's a party boat that far south. Uh there's party boats in Miami, um, North Miami uh, Reward Fishing Fleet just joined us at the Florida Guides Association. Uh, that's more like Miami fishing uh, area, uh, Reward Fishing Fleet, uh, Captain Wayne Kahn. Um, but Vero Beach, I don't believe there's any party boats. There's party boats in like Canaveral area, and then there's party boats like uh, Fort Lauderdale, I think is probably the furthest north but to be honest with you, I, I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but pretty sure Vero Beach doesn't have a party boat. Where do the hogfish go this time of year? Uh, warmer water months, generally around this time of year, April, May, the hogfish start to slow down and they dissipate. And then we start to see them pick back up in October. Cooler months, hogfish generally concentrate around smaller structures, like those smaller ledges. And we're easy, they're more easily targeted with hook and line. We catch more of them on hook and line during cooler months. The reason for that is 
Uh, during cooler months, we get cold fronts. Those cold fronts are low pressure systems. Low pressure systems are storms. They feel those storms coming. They concentrate around structure to kind of hide out, and they tend to stay there. Warmer months, those hogfish spread out and get out the, into that softer bottom where we don't typically fish. Uh, we're not fishing softer, sandier bottom. We fish hard bottom structures, ledges, rock piles, hard rolls, potholes. These are areas that are predominantly fished by fishermen. Uh, that's what we can see on our bottom machine. That's what holds other fish. Hogfish will spread out into the sand, and uh, they do a lot more scavenging for crustaceans, and they live in harems, generally one male to about anywhere between five to seven females. And they live in these little harems, and they build these little nests, and that's where the hogfish hang out, out into the sand. So targeting them with hook and line is very difficult. Once it gets warmer, a lot of spear fishermen will jump in the water and go hunt those hogfish. And uh, basically, you start on a small ledge, and you'll swim out away from the ledge, and that's where you'll find these little hogfish nests. And if you get into that area, all of a sudden, you'll see back-to-back -back nests. It's really easy to target those hogfish with a spear gun in the summer. Hook and line, very difficult because they're all so spread out, and they're not concentrated, and they're not going to be as e uh, actively eating out there either. They generally are going to be scavenging at specific times and working together in small groups, so they're a lot harder to target with hook and line when it's warmer. They don't really go far. They just go away from the structure, and they don't feed as actively. All right. What other questions do we have here? Oh, well, that's definitely <laughs> They're asking about beach chairs at our Shell Key Ferry. That is a, a good question, but not meant for the show. Um, are we out of questions already? Oh, we should do another giveaway, shouldn't we? <laughs> Let's do a 10-hour all-day trip. 10-hour all-day trip for two guests. 10-hour all-day for two. Lucky winner is... Paul Bach Bachman. Congratulations, Paul. You've got... Five minutes or less to claim your free trip by texting our full phone number at the bottom of the screen, uh, your full home address. Let's see what other questions might we have here. It gets a little bit more difficult later in the show to see all the questions because we start to get multiple pages of questions and it gets a little harder to bring up. Uh, I'm going fishing in Clearwater Tuesday. Any chance of cobia? That's definitely a possibility. Cobia, this time of year, start to become more active and more common. Uh, but in our area, just overall, we haven't seen as much cobia lately. So definitely seeing a marked uh, decrease in number of cobia locally. Um, but they have been caught. Our friend uh, Tim got one the other day, a pretty big one inshore uh, along the South Shore area. Uh, there's definitely some cobia moving around the bay, uh, around Sand Key, Dunedin Causeway. I'm sure there's probably a good shot at finding a cobia. Uh, you never know. What do you recommend best safety device when you are out on the water? I have a Sea Dew Fish Pro Jet Ski. Uh, you should have a small ditch bag on that pro jet ski uh, in case you're especially if you're going off the beach with it uh, you should have a small waterproof uh, what's called a ditch bag in case of an emergency it flips over uh, breaks down whatever you're stranded uh, that should have some uh, some key elements noise makers like a little whistle um, glow sticks are a good idea uh, flares are a great idea uh, waterproof VHF radio is really good uh, remember, your phones are waterproof now, so if you're on your jet ski, what I would do is put my phone in that little safe uh, waterproof bag, ditch bag. Um, and then if you're going really far, which some people do in those jet skis, uh, having some sort of ship-to-shore communication if you're outside of cell phone range, like a Garmin inReach is a great idea, or even a satellite phone. But really, nowadays, a satellite phone isn't as common as one of those Garmin inReach devices, which lets you text uh, and it's even better, I think, than a satellite phone. Uh, also, like a mirror, signal mirror, um, things like uh, there's, there's a whole litany of things that you should have in your ditch bag. But something small uh, that you're able to reach pretty quickly in case of an emergency or in the case of uh, being stranded out in your jet ski, you want to make sure you're prepared. So always having extra water on there, that kind of thing, um, being prepared if you break down. 
Um, but it's not a good idea to go offshore with a single engine, and a jet ski has a single engine. So if you're going to go offshore off the beach, it's a good idea to not go very far, stay within uh, cell phone range, stay around at least within sight of other boats, or preferably go with a group. Find another friend with a jet ski and go with him, you know, so that way there's two. Always a good idea to be buddy boating if you have a single engine, for sure. Uh, let's see, what other cu- what other questions do we have here? Someone said, bring your cup to the show. That's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. Tony Barnes' wife made a great cup for Richard Harcourt, which uh, Richard gifted to me. It's pretty cool. I should have brought it with me, but I, I neglected to remember it. So sorry about that, guys. Uh, did we get all the questions? Looks like it. Looks like it. All right, well. Definitely tried to stay a little later, but it seems like we're out of questions already. Uh, Let's do our uh, swag pack giveaway, and then uh, we'll get into uh, our closing stuff here and uh, give away our 39-hour trip. So let's see here who won our Hubbard's Marina swag pack. Remember, if you're the swag pack winner, you also have to send us your T-shirt size when you send us your home address. Lucky winner is of the Hubbard's Marina swag pack. Richard Harcourt, that's ironic. Just mentioned him, that's funny. Congratulations, Richard Harcourt. You won the swag pack. You have to text us your full home address and your T-shirt size, and we'll get you out that swag pack. Uh, Is there a limit on Cobia? Uh, Yes, there is a limit on Cobia. Um, I think it's two per vessel. Uh, But Josh is already navigating to our... Hubbard's Marina fishing regulations page. Uh, you got to move that arrow yeah. over here. Boom. Confirm location. Now, Cobia. Nice. And I'm pretty sure it's two per boat. Yeah, two per boat, one per person. So your vessel limit of two fish. Uh, so if you got 15 people on the boat, you're only allowed two fish. Uh, or you've got one per person, whichever is less. So if you got one person on the boat, one fish is all you're allowed. If you got two people on the boat, you're allowed two fish. If you got 14 people on the boat, you're allowed two fish. 36-inch minimum size to the fork. So it's got to be like a 40-inch fish, 38-inch fish. Pretty big cobia in order to be able to keep it. That's our federal waters regulations. Oh, let's see here. Open season, it's all year, by the way. Uh, Do you have any suggestions for an electric reel for trolling on a 39-hour trip? No. Uh, To troll, you need a pretty big reel, and most of those electric reels don't have a lot of torque unless you get a really nice electric reel. So Jig Head Ed Summerall, uh, may he rest in peace, uh, passed on, but he had the Daiwa high-end trolling reel, and that thing was like, I think (laughs) $1,800, and that was an electric reel that could troll, Um, but it was, like I said, $1,800. We have uh, some of the nice Daiwa Tanacom 1000s, and they do not troll. They're a little too undersized to be able to retrieve a fish while the boat's moving. They're a little bit higher torque, not low-end torque. So, uh, unfortunately, they're kind of geared for bottom fishing, not trolling. Uh, There are some two-speed electric reels and you can troll with those two speed electric reels but they are pricey small ones definitely don't have enough power to troll because remember we're not troll it's not a trolling trip it's a bottom fishing trip so we're not going to slow down to retrieve those fish you got to retrieve the fish while the boat's moving so it's a little bit tricky uh let's see here uh best bait and rigs for kingfish uh, we actually have that on our website. If you go to hubbardsmarina.com, click fishing trips, click fishing video links, go to the fishing tips and tricks page. I guess Josh is going to show us too. So go to our website, click uh, fishing trips, fishing video links, and that first one is the fishing tips and tricks, which brings you right to our fishing tips and tricks page. And under rigging tips, there's a great little video here. Uh, from Smokey with how to tie a kingfish stinger rig or a flat line for kingfish. That same rig would work for Wahoo as well. So really great option uh, to tie a flat line. So definitely recommend checking out that video after the show if you have not seen it seen it already. Uh, let's see. 
I think we covered pretty much everything here. Um, let's see. Um, don't forget about our uh, final Friday coming up at the end of this month. Uh, every last Friday of every month, you got final Friday. We definitely want to make sure you have a chance to uh, join us for that. You will be uh, sorely disappointed if you don't make it out to final Friday. So really, really good. Uh, let's see. Uh, the winner of the swag pack, which Richard Harcourt seems to be some confusion over the swag pack winner, but their name literally appears on the screen. So pretty clear when you're not watching live guys, <laughs> Richard Harcourt won the swag pack. No, no one else. Can you fillet and eat fish while offshore? Mm, it's a super gray area. Kind of yes and no. Uh, we don't because it is such a gray area. Uh, so I would recommend avoiding that and to not get yourself into trouble. So um, I think that's about everything that I wanted to cover. Again, we've got the council meeting this week. We've got a special guest next weekend. So definitely join us next weekend and every Sunday night right here on our Hubbard's Marina live stream show. Off the hook with Captain Hubbard. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Hopefully we'll see you next week for another episode and uh, don't forget to stop by our seafood market, Don's Dock, over there at the very far east end of the boardwalk. It is a pretty cool place with great food, great fresh seafood, and uh, we've got killer, killer selections with uh, oysters, clams, uh, lots of shrimp, and uh, fresh snapper grouper, and so much more. So stop by Don's Dock Seafood Market at the east end of the boardwalk if you have not done so already. If you're too busy to go fishing, you can stop by the seafood market and pick up some fish, uh, or you could just stop in and uh, pick up some fresh fish if you don't have time to get out there on the water. Or if it's too rough, go buy some fish down at the seafood market. So check it out if you have not done so already. We got fish bread down there. We got cla uh, clams, oysters, stone crabs, a lot of other stuff besides just fresh fish as well. Plus, we sell bait, fuel, ice, all that good stuff down there as well. So we've really expanded our bait selections, live bait selections down there. So pretty cool as well. So also, hopefully we'll see you out on the water for some fishing. Uh, looks like again next week uh, towards this coming weekend and start of next week, weather's looking pretty good. And hopefully this week it'll kind of calm down a little bit. But Definitely some good options out there, and uh, fishing is hot when the weather allows us to get out there. So hopefully we'll see you out in the water. With that, um, let's go ahead and find out who won our 39-hour fishing trip for one lucky winner. 39-hour trip for one lucky winner. Let's see who the winner is. 39-hour trip for one goes to James Lynch here in Tampa. Congratulations. A local Tampa guy, James Lynch, has won the 39-hour fishing trip for one lucky winner. With that, we're going to go ahead and conclude our show. Uh, we are, uh, I am driving to Alabama super early in the morning. So, y'all have a good night, tight lines. Hopefully, we'll see you next week for another episode. Supporters After Show is going to start a little later. going to be a little unique. Uh, we'll do it from the truck. Josh will hold the phone. <laughs> so we'll start shortly, and uh, it'll be kind of short because, like I said, we've got to wake up super early. Y'all have a good night. We'll see you next week for another episode. If you're a supporter, pop over to the supporters page. We'll start up probably around like 8.55 or so. Y'all have a good night. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of our Hubbard's Marina family.